Good morning. Good morning, darling. Hi, sweetheart. Mm, I love How are you? you. I love you too. Okay, let's get with it. Mm, it looks so pretty. Good. See you out there. One of our members had an appendix taken out last Wednesday, and we're getting our card. Would you like to sign it too? Who was it? Good morning. Good morning. Absolutely Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Okay. Love you, Mary Kay. Love you too. God bless you. God bless you. On with the show. Every time I see you, you look better. Every Thank time I see you, you must be living right. Your eyes are getting dimmer. <laughs> each year, something extraordinary happens here. This stage is transformed into an elaborate festival of magic and delight. Who is this woman whose dream touches thousands of others and changes their lives forever? I've worked in the same company for almost 13 years and it's always been that way where I had a title, I had a good pay, others would consider that a good pay, but there's always that glass ceiling and that's it for me. It's kind of like a plateau and a dead end. But with Mary Kay Cosmetics, there's always the honor and the glory and the praise, the accolades, the fun, and there's no limit to where you can go with Mary Kay. That here is a woman who retired from one direct selling position, developed a company, and made it respond to the needs of women. And she knew them, and those needs have not changed. So for that, I will eternally be grateful. To understand Mary Kay, to understand the magic of her world, it's important to know how difficult it has been for women to make their way in the workplace. They have worked for less money, at uninspired low prestige jobs and with far less opportunity for advancement than men with equal qualifications. But every once in a while, even as early as the 30s and 40s, a woman would come along who was blazing her own trail making her own opportunities in a male-dominated world. It certainly came at the right time. I just got the little ones to take a nap. Oh, I know all about that. <laughs> Let's face it. Of all the jobs in the world, being a parent is the most important. Don't you agree? <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Thank you. But there's no school or academy where you can get a degree in being a mom or dad. It would be easier if children came with a set of directions. They do now. These books offer advice on how to help children grow up with the right values at a price everyone can afford. I wish I could really use these, but I could no more afford them than fly to the moon. I know it's hard, but listen to me, you only have to pay a little each month. They're still way out of my league. They look wonderful. I'm sorry. Look, you sound like you really want these books. I do, and I bet I know some other people who would too. Do you think you could sell books like these? I could try. I tell you what, you sell 10 sets for me and I'll give you a set free. Wait a minute, all I have to do is sell 10 sets. That shouldn't be too hard. Okay, is that your car outside? Oh, it's my husband's. I don't drive. I never learned how. I'm going to leave these here. You look them over. I'll come back on Monday. Make sure that car is here. And honey, you and I are going to sell some books. That sounds great. <laughs> I can't 
I'll leave you so. Now let out the clutch slowly, Mary Kay. Ten cents over the telephone already. No, too fast. Easy on the clutch. Oh, boy, this is fun. Well, I found that I really loved direct sales. I loved the freedom that I had and being able to manage my own time. And being in direct sales meant that I could be gone just three or four hours at a time, and it gave me the opportunity of being able to be back with my kids when I needed to be quickly, which was very appealing to me. Hi, I'm Mary Kay. I loved the fact that I could make the kind of money that I did in a small amount of time, and I decided this is something I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Mary Kay was a natural. She didn't really sell. She offered an opportunity for people to be better parents, something everybody wants to be. Within nine months, Mary Kay not only earned her free set of instructional guides, but she had sold $25,000 worth of the books to friends and neighbors. It's important that you have a product that needs to be purchased again and again. When you have a customer once, you usually have them from that point forward if you treat them correctly and become their friend. Obviously, when they bought a set of books, that was the end of the sale and the end of that customer. Mary Kay discovered Stanley Home Products. She decided this might be the opportunity she was looking for. She gave a few Stanley parties, and they were dismal failures. She realized that selling household products required a different strategy than selling books. Of course, you can to Dallas, this car. This, this is the car to Dallas? Yes, ma'am. This is the car? No, you're all awesome. Maybe she could find the secret to success at the company's big national convention in Dallas. She borrowed $12 for the train ticket and the hotel. And with one change of clothes, a box of crackers, and a pound of cheese, she headed for Big D. I wanted to go because I had to learn what I needed to know in order to make a living at that. Besides, it sounded so wonderful. I lost a few friends in the process of trying to borrow that $12, but finally I got the money. But with it, I got a sermon about how I shouldn't be going to one of those evil conventions like men go to, and that I ought to be spending that $12 on my children's shoes. But I went anyway. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. It is my great honor to announce this year's Stanley Home Products Queen of Sales, LaVita O'Brien. And to show our appreciation, we want to present to you this beautiful alligator handbag. Thank you so much. <laughs> I can't believe it. Um, well, I, uh, I really just followed what you've taught me. Set a goal, hitch my wagon to a star, and um, once I got on my track, I, I shared with some friends what I wanted to achieve. And I did it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Lafita O'Brien. Mr. Beveridge? Next year, I'm going to be the queen. You know, somehow I think you will. Oh, it's so good to see you. LaVita. Thank you. Yes. I just think you're terrific. Oh, thank you. I wonder if one evening while we're here, would you put on a Stanley party in your room and show me what you do? Because obviously I'm not doing the right thing. Well, of course I will. How about tomorrow night? Thank you so much. Okay. That would be wonderful. <laughs> Hello? S-E-A-N-L-E-Y. That's the slogan.
look and you will hear buzzing, buzzing in your ear. <laughs> I persuaded the woman who was queen of sales to put on a Stanley party. And I took 19 pages of notes. And I spent my time going back to Houston memorizing those notes. The next week it really paid off because I quadrupled my sales. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. It is my great honor to announce this year's Stanley Home Products queen of sales, Mary Kay Rogers. Years later, Mary Kay's stage would rival the glamour of Broadway. I was a school teacher and we never got pink Cadillacs when we taught school. The feeling of that recognition and knowing that everybody knows what you've accomplished and just the feeling it inside just makes you feel even more on top and once you, you just want to keep going. Prizes and recognition, to me, is the ultimate. We have a company car, but it's a little special in terms of the way that we, we earn it because it becomes a symbol of achievement. I came to my first seminar, and when she walked out on the stage, I thought Elvis walked in the room. The cheers and the crowds and the people rushing the stage. Then I realized what a difference she had made in all of these people's lives. Well, hello. Hello. Miss Lookalike. Are we ready? That's a little low. <laughs> <laughs> little low, little low. Let me see how you look. Oh, you look sweet. That's how you look. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Where's your necklace? It's in my bag. Good. Okay. All right. Your turn. One down. Now, now who do you want to look like today? Her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's turn this thing around. Let me look like her now. All you gotta do is take off 50 years. So get with it. It's gonna take a while. <laughs> Grandmother called me one day and said we're doing a skit where they want to look alike. That was my granddaughter, Gina. <laughs> Shall we say before and after? Before yeah. what and after what? Yeah, right. Before there was a Mary Kay Cosmetics, while working for Stanley Home Products, Mary Kay was discovering the ingredients of success she would someday bring to her own company. Which would be better, Wednesday or Friday? Oh, that's too bad. Uh, I'll call you next month. I'd love to demonstrate it for just the three of you. Don't worry if they can't all come. Some of my most successful parties have been with just a few people. You recruited two people, that's great. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> now we have to get those two people to recruit two more people. Uh-huh. See you soon. Bye-bye. Don't let him get the best of you. Settle down, boys. I'll be home in three hours. Here's the number where I'll be. They can have some of those chocolate chip cookies you baked for them after they finish their homework. I love you. Richard, shouldn't you be in bed? I'm waiting for my mommy. Well, goodness. That's Mary Kay's son. Where is she? She's at a party. Oh. A party. <clears throat> I see. Richard, come in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> come 
interested in that. I'm concerned about that. You mean you collect your cards? Now, if you have oh. any questions about anything, I'd be happy to answer them right now. Oh, you know that wax that you said uh, that I wouldn't slip or fall down on? Uh-huh. I fell down last week and nearly broke my neck. It's a good thing it was Stanley or you might have. Oh. <laughs> and please, if you know anyone who would like to host a Stanley party, it'll give you extra points on your hostess gift. Mm. Oh, and what might that be? Well, I'll show you a picture of it a little bit later. Ben, put two cans of wax in Mrs. Klein's sack on the bottom along with two window cleaners. Oh, put the toothbrushes on the top so you don't crush them. Let's see. Yeah. Marilyn, honey, don't forget to put an extra duster in Mrs. Blinken's bag. Richard? Staple the order form a little higher on the sack. Richard says he was born in direct sales, and he says that because even at the ripe old age of three, he was helping us fill Stanley orders in the garage. And the other two kids helped with filling those orders, too. This was sort of a family ritual every Saturday morning. We filled all the orders I'd sold during the week, and then we delivered them. And afterwards, the children counted the money to see how much we'd made. Look, I got all gold stars this week. That means I get all my allowance. No, you don't. You didn't wash the dishes on Thursday. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Did we get enough money to go to the movies this week? I hope so. In the early 1950s, Mary Kay left Stanley for another sales position. Her hard work and talent brought her into the company's boardroom. We've got 1,400 people. Why aren't our sales higher? I've been thinking about that. All right, Mary Kay, what have you got? Well... As you know, I've opened 43 states around the country. I've hired the best people, but they need help training their sales force. If we had an audiovisual presentation, we could use it to train when I'm on the road recruiting. Mary Kay, you know we don't use audiovisuals. That's my point. We should. We could teach, but we could also inspire. An audiovisual program could get our people excited about our products, show them how to increase their sales. We always tell them what they're doing wrong. Let's show them how to do it right. Motivate with a carrot instead of beating them over the head with a stick. Well, that's just not the way it's done. Then we should change the way it's done. Now, there you go again, Mary Kay. You're thinking like a woman. Bill, what have you got? And give me something I can use. That's all you have to do. And it's time we stopped competing with each other. Let's save that for the other companies. Look, if a displayer in one area is having trouble, another displayer should pitch in and help. The best of us should help the rest of us succeed. So get on out there and do your best. I know you can do it. All right. Sounds great. In time, still at the same company, Mary Kay had trained, motivated, and supervised one of the best sales teams in the business. She watched as many of the men she had trained went on to successful careers, men who were paid twice her salary. I'm going to do it. about my raise. I've been here 11 years and I've opened 43 states for you. You know there's nothing I wouldn't do for this company. Mary Kay, no one here has been more valuable to the company than you have. And believe me, I understand how you feel. But you've got to understand that the men in this company have families to support. I've got to pay them more. I have a family and bills to pay too. About the promotion, I know that you're qualified, but the bottom line is this. I just can't afford to put a woman in this position. We need someone who will think about career first. I'm sorry. I just, I just can't, can't afford, afford to put a woman in this position. position. We, we need, need someone, someone who will think, think about, about career first. first. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry.
I thought, this is it, I've had it. And to me it was like a death because I, I could not believe that I would no longer be connected with this company to whom I had given so much. And I, I felt very devastated, very sad. And I went home and I remember that I cried all night and if I had had the opportunity the next morning to come back, if they had called me, I would have gone back, chances are. But they didn't call. All those years I gave to the company, And I was so, so angry about what had happened. And I guess it was only then that I decided to write the book that would help women over the obstacles that I had, had to overcome. I didn't know how to write a book. And so I had to use a legal size pad and all I did to organize my thoughts was to put down on one pad everything good that the two companies I had been with had done. And then I spent a couple of weeks on that and then I took a second pad and wrote down the problems that I had encountered. And then one day it occurred to me, if you're so brilliant, how would you have solved them had you had the opportunity and the responsibility? And then I read the whole thing and discovered that I had put on paper a marketing plan that would give women an open-end opportunity where they could accomplish anything in this world they wanted to do. If they wanted to do it bad enough, they were willing to pay the price. A company that will give women the opportunity to be the best that they can be. And so the company was born. I felt that I had to get a product that a woman could use and believe in and uh, recommend to other people and would have enough confidence in her ability that she could sell that product. So I thought a lot about a lot of things, what could be used as a product and decided that since it had to be something women could believe in and most women feel they are cosmetic experts at age 20. Why not cosmetics? One month before the company opened, Mary Kay's husband died of a heart attack. So, what do we do? Every single penny I have is spent or committed. We go on. I think you could do anything. But how? I only have half a company. Mother, I'll move to Dallas tomorrow to help you. That's right. We'll all help. I'll open Houston. Mother, you can do anything you set your mind to do. Now, this is my savings passbook. I know I can't think of anybody I'd rather invest in than you. There's $4,500 there. You use it how you think best. On September the 13th, 1963, we opened our doors as planned. And nobody starts a company on Friday the 13th, but we did, because that's the day the lease started. And Richard was um, helping to fill orders, which of course we didn't have at that point. We had a small Sears Roebuck 995 shelf and one layer of cosmetics. That was it. Marilyn, on the other hand, went off to Houston and began trying to sell through the class outline that I had given her of how she should do this. Later on, as Ben joined us to be the warehouse manager, we would be up till two or three o'clock in the morning putting out a newsletter, and we did it with one of those old mimeograph machines. I would write it, and they would print it, and then we would all stuff envelopes and mail these things out. And it was a very interesting family venture. We all worked as long as it took to do whatever was needed to be done. 
Today, we have some special people here who would like to share with you a few words they've been saving up in their hearts for many, many years. It was the first day of first grade. I remember we walked home together that day at lunchtime. And when you came by on the way back to school, still munching the egg sandwich you had fixed for yourself, my mother realized that because your mother was working, you had to fix your own lunch. From now on, you'll come to our house, Mother declared. You became like a member of our family. My mother always delighted in knowing that you still drink your milk over ice because that's the way she fixed it for you all those many years ago. We've remained close for a lifetime, Mary Kay. I admire you and I love you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mary Kay's childhood friend from Houston, Dorothy Zeph Forrestal. the first time I'm speechless. <laughs> Thank you for all of you for what you've meant to my life. And God bless you. Dorothy's right, I used to eat her breakfast every single morning. <laughs> she was one of those little kids, you know, who just wasn't hungry ever. And her mother had her hair and little, lovely little pig, little curls. They used to wear them little curls. And she had those darling, she had a little starch pinafore, it looked so cute, and here was Mary Kay in that sugar bowl haircut. <laughs> wash and wear dress before they were wash and wear because if it got ironed, I had to do it. And she looked so perfect all the time, and my goodness, what memories. It was a glamorous age, the roaring 20s. The American adventure had never been so alive with promise. But to a young girl in Houston, Texas, that adventure seemed very far away. like some potato soup. Potato soup? Yeah, for supper. I haven't had potato soup since your mother did the cooking. Potato soup. <coughs> potato soup. I don't know how to make potato soup. Now listen, sweetheart. You take two potatoes. That should be just about right for them. And then you need some onion and some half and half cream. Oh, Mama, can't you please come home? Now you can do this, honey. Don't forget the butter, and you chop up the onions real fine. I'll be right there. Now, I've got to go, sweetheart. I know this is hard, but Mother knows you can do it. I love you. Bye-bye. I said when I was talking up there, that you are a living example of what you believe. You can do it. And she always believed that. You can do it. Your mother always told you no, you can do it. she sure did. And you know, if Dorothy made an A, I had to make an A plus because I had to be, and the only way I could really be close to Dorothy was to be there and try to do, outdo her in order to stay close. Because she had all the things that my family did not have and that I didn't have. And I envied her on one hand, admired her on the other. Whatever she was in, she was usually ahead of it. 
Well, we were very competitive in that we wanted to be the best of whatever we did. She was um, extremely capable of, t of taking care of any type of thing, um, even from first grade. As I say, I, my first remembrance of her is helping me. I probably was crying, couldn't get the little locker open. And she came and said, did I need help? So I don't remember that at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, I do remember that's that. Funny. Uh huh. It's funny. It's been, you know, quite a few years, but I do Don't remember. Tell her many. No, I won't tell. Sure. We we have a thing. Mary Kay told me, and I use it now. A woman that will tell her age will tell anything. Right. <laughs> and so. So we're thirty through. <laughs> America's participation in World War One became essential to the winning of the war. Thank you. Mary Kay was an exceptional student and made friends easily. She won prizes in debate and public speaking contests. She graduated at the top of her class. Then it was time for that long-awaited rite of passage, college. This is so pretty. I know. Mary Kay, I'm so nervous. Dorothy, don't worry. You're going to conquer the world. Time is just going to fly by, and before you know it, you'll be the prettiest Phi Beta Kappa in Texas. There's so many clothes. I'm scared. You'll be fine. I know you can make it. <laughs> oh, you can carry this suitcase. You can do anything. Okay. I'm ready. Are you ready? Ready. Forget this. Bye. And so, it was time for the adventure to begin. They were off to college. All, that is, but one. I think it's possible that we grow as we learn how to overcome the problems and difficulties of our lives. And I'm sure that having overcome so many things in my life that were very difficult, that I have been able to impart that to women as how they, with their struggles, can use those struggles to grow and perhaps become better than they ever thought they could be. From becoming a single divorce, parents with no alimony, no child support, no home. All of my dreams are going to become are coming true this time because I'm going to do it myself. I have uh, flexible hours now. I'm able to quit my full-time job. And when you work for yourself, you get paid the kind of money that you deserve too, which is very exciting. And today, it thrills me to know that we're not only touching the lives of women in Dallas, but women around the world in country after country with cultures much different than ours, but with the same purposes and demands and aims in life that we all have. Are you ready for the most exciting night of your life? Yeah. Good. Because you see, tonight is a night when dreams come true. This is in case you get cold up here. Oh, thank you. I'll bet you've already spent it. Okay, I'll bet you've spent it. Isn't it the place to be? Yes, it is. Thank you so much. Thank you. In Cleveland, Ohio, many Cleveland, years ago, Ohio, you yes. said to me, Nina, get a car, and I did. And Nina, get to be a director, and I did. Now tell me something else. Be a national, and yes, you do. <laughs> All right, I will. I was uh, working on my master's degree and um, coordinating a job training program for young adults, and now I get to make the money, um, the wonderful money of Mary Kay, but I still get to volunteer and do that type of work. But I was very unhappy in my job. I was giving, giving, giving to a lot of people, but I really wasn't receiving the things that I needed. And Mary Kay allows me to be able to help people and still give, but also be able to um, live a wonderful lifestyle. Mary Kay is a celebration of the wings of possibility. She is the source and inspiration of a dream that will live forever.
I'm often asked the question, how would you like to be remembered? And I guess it's as someone who helped women to understand how great they really are.